everyone. Uh, Dave here from A Very Cold Leads. Uh, thanks for coming along to another episode of the podcast. Uh, now, this week I spoke to Phil Picken. Now, he joined Chesterfield on loan from Manchester United in 2005, was in a really good Manchester United reserve team that included people like Tommy Lee, um, PK, Rossi, Kieran Richardson, people like that. So, uh, I remember when he came to Chesterfield and being quite excited at the time. Uh, he then got a permanent contract with Chesterfield after his uh, loan ended and was with Chesterfield uh, until we left Saltergate. Uh, it was even around during that last game uh, against Bournemouth. Um, he was a really dependable uh, right back, good in the tackle, a uh, good header of the ball considering he wasn't the, the tallest and um, was a great passer of the ball as well. Um, so it was good chatting to him about how his game developed over that time. Uh, he then went on to Bury, uh, where he was part of the Bury squad that had a ding dong battle with Chesterfield um, for the title um, in our first season at the B2 net. Um, and then unfortunately had to retire early, um, which if you've listened to a few of these podcasts you'll know is not uncommon. Uh, Phil was really honest about the mental effects of that, uh, which I'm always really thankful uh, when people are so open and upfront about their experiences because it just gives us an insight uh, into the life of a footballer, uh, really, which we uh, don't always get just being supporters, obviously. Uh, I am at Spire Legends on Twitter and Instagram and Legends of the Spire on Facebook, so do get in touch. Uh, but here we go with the latest episode of the podcast with the great Phil Picken. supporters you kind of you feel like you know people when actually you don't <laughs> and oh, obviously- I know I know I know yeah there's a perception sometimes of certain players and stuff like that they, they sometimes completely different I suppose isn't it yeah and, and a lot of the time you know uh, uh, quite a lot of footballers I've spoken to talked about how they kind of their personalities changed as they walked onto a pitch you have to kind of look after yourself don't you and Oh, totally. Act totally. a bit differently, and so we never oh, totally, really see yeah. the truth. I was person. probably I, I was probably the worst before that. You know, I was probably looking back now. I was a bit, a little bit too sharp my tongue and stuff like that. Where you probably wouldn't have done it. You know, look, you know. But now I'm a bit older. You think oh, probably should have done that. Something said that in the pitch <laughs> and stuff. But it's what you do to try and win. I suppose isn't it sometimes. Hey, it's survival, isn't it? On the pitch, sometimes. Crikey. Yeah. So if I start with your. Uh, kind of youth career with Manchester United. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. How did that all come about? Um, about nine years old. Um, I played for a team called Medlock Rangers from Charleston, Manchester area where I'm from. Um, in one of the tournaments, and uh, I think yeah, Radcliffe tournament, I think it was, and one of the scouts we scouted me. It was actually quite a few at the time. City crew. Um, that were all asking me to go down, even though I was a City fan. Um, at the time, um, City weren't probably the team to, to be at, at that time. Um, I've never been brought up like that, to be fair. Not like a bit of Bloomer family. It's, you know, quite proud of unions and that. So anyway, it was more, more of a, a choice of a head rather than my heart, probably sort of thing. And then we went into... Um, Went down for trials and ended up being there since, until I was 19 years old, really, yeah. Yeah, and I, I read somewhere, I mean, it may, it may have a bit of truth in it, I don't know, that it was like your mum that had to convince you because because you were a sister. Something fan. like that. No, I don't think, yeah, not, not, not really that true, that, yeah, no, so I've read that before. No, it's nothing, no, it was, I suppose, it was, I went down there to try to obviously a trial for them but obviously see if it was the right fit for, for me at the time as well because they had obviously City was everything but as soon as I went there um, the coaches Paul McGuinness at the time Tony Wheel and you know um, quite well to do um, coaches they, they looked after me from the start and he enjoyed it with the lads um, and I never looked back really I kind of stuck there I did have opportunities of going along to sign for City and, um, just as leaving school he was asking me to go but I'd already kind of settled into the surroundings and things were going quite well. So um, I was stuck, was stuck with United. And I'm glad I did, to be fair. Yeah, I can't, I've got no regrets anyway. What's it, what's it like when you kind of progress from those younger teams up to... Because like, weren't you in the reserve squad that won the quadruple? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's it like when you get that progress? 
Um, it, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. You kind of you kind of get swapped away with it, sort of thing. You're just in like a bubble, you know what I mean? And then you're playing up in age, and the next minute you're getting called up to the reserves. And um, fortunately, I it was it was involved in a team where there was some fantastic players as well. Um, uh, Jenna PK was there. Tommy Lee was around at the time with Tommy Heaton, um, Luke Steele, good goalkeeper, really. Um, Jonathan Spector, Ian Richardson, um, Chris Eagles, Giuseppe Rossi. You know, it was a fantastic, real good team and to be part of it at the time. Again, looking back, you know, I'll probably keep saying, that, saying this as we go along. When you look back, you think, wow, you know, it was a bit of a privilege at the time. And But enjoyed every minute. We've we done well. Um, and yeah, it was... Uh, it was great. It was a great time, really. It was. Mm. It was completely different, completely different to what I've ended up getting. You know, that, the real league football. That was a shock when you, you know, when, you, when you're coming from United to um, real, it's real men's sport, I suppose. Where you know, like, there's points are on the line every time. I know points are on the line with the reserves, but it's just a complete different ball game. Yeah, and I've spoke to a few players before where they've said, kind of reserve football. You're kind of thinking about yourself a lot more. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, totally, totally. You, you know, um, I think what they do now, I, th- I think what the, you know, they have the under twenty ones. I think it is um, that get involved in the, the Papa Johns and stuff like that. It's, it's probably the best thing they could do. I think it. I think it's really good just because um, it gives them an insight of what it's going to be like and who you're going to be up against. Because you sometimes, especially when at United, it was it was total football. You know what I mean. Mm. And you just can't get away with that sometimes, especially, you know, at the time with Chesterfield, do we, um, it was League One when we signed and it was probably mid-table side or so, or, you know, lower half, so it was, it was scrappy for points, you not just, the goalkeeper's not playing out from the back every time, that's a shot, you know what I mean, it was a completely different, and you had to try and get, get used to it, so, yeah. So, so you signed for Chesterfield, so it was the summer of 2005, well, it was like a loan move, wasn't it? Yeah, the loan move first. Yeah, it was. Um, I think it was early on this season, actually, was it? Mm. Pretty sure it was, because I think we played a couple of games to the reserves, and then got the shout that um, <clears throat> Chester were interested in going, and it'd be good for me. I think Brian McLeod at the time, kind of um, Ricky Spradge, just said you should go, you should go and um, get some experience like that, and uh, and we did. Uh, I think Oldham was. Oh, yeah, it was Oldham, my first professional day, uh, league debut. And um, we got hammered 4 1. I was going to say, you got beat 4 1. So, was that like a, oh heck, this is what league football's like? <laughs> got there. And the kit was massive. I'm not, I'm not a big, massive, six foot odd lad, but the kit was, I'm talking down to my wrist, the short sleeve down to my wrist nearly. The shorts are like an XXL. Because you're with Steve Blatherwick, Wade Allison, um, Shane Nicholson. You know, big lads. <laughs> they, they just probably got one size fits all, but yeah. it was burying the likes of me. And I thought, okay, get on with it. And I think we played the guy with Guy Branston, the centre half for Oldham. He was playing a real, you know, yeah. I remember knocking into him at the time because I was still developing as I was, I was 18 or some 19 years old, something like that. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a real eye opener. <laughs> what to say? I'm, I'm six foot five, and I many years ago bought a Steve Blatherwick match one shirt and it's like a dress on me and I'm six foot five I don't know how they make shirts that big <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just had the same shirt for everyone at that time it was like if it's blathers it'll do for everyone else sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get a chance to kind of come and look at Chesterfield before signing or was it just a case of signing and then turn up on the first day and think all oh, right uh, yeah it was a conversation I think it was leave it leave it just in the wrong there he rang there um, had a discussion that's not a thought and stuff like that. You know, took a bit of time out. Obviously, the logistics of things and I've been, it weren't too bad for me being from Manchester. So, um, yeah, it was just a discussion really more than anything and what they're looking for me and what they're wanting to do as a club. And um, yeah, it was literally, here's Mark Alex's number. Me, you know, I'll get you charging from that end and go meet him sort of thing. I was going to ask actually about the North Northwest contingent because there was... It felt like there was loads at that time. First, there wasn't just me and Mark at first mm. for probably all that season, I'd say. And then it eventually it did end up. Um, I mean, Alec went away for a little bit and then come back, didn't I? Um, mm. But it was like Tommy Lee, Danny Arl, um, Paul Hasler, Martin Gritton, 
it was a real did Donald McDermott come right around. It was it was um you can doing two cars at the set sometimes, you know what I mean? It really was. Whoever was there last, somebody was waiting for him, he was driving, he had to get in and what have you. So uh, they were good times as well though. They were really good times. What what did you have from Linda's sandwich shop? <laughs> I'd say I've actually seen it's the fair thing you asking this one. But, uh, Ask everyone. <laughs> I think it was um who sold get either a Chinese chicken or uh, an omelet. It was like an omelette on a roll with um, uh, brown sauce. It's like a cheese and an omelette. We used to always get them warm. We used to get them before the games as well sometimes. I just say we was travelling to London. We used to go and get them and I'll make an order. The, the, the young lads would go and get them in the middle. Kind of off. Yeah. <laughs> omelette yeah. roll. It's, it's the most popular. Um, yeah, definitely. So so what was your first impressions of like, because it was Roy McFarland then, wasn't it, when you were first? It was, yeah. Um, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know too much about Wright at first, but obviously, as I started to find out, what a bit of a legend he was in the football world. Like, um, and then obviously went down and met him. Um, leave, that's what, like I said, I spoke to Lee Richardson first. So I went down and, yeah, it, it, it was good. It was, it, obviously, the, the facilities weren't what I, was, what I would come from. But it was great, you know, it was a real tight-knit uh, club and them. I think Phil was a master at the time, then you Jamie Hewitt. They're all great, you know, great guys who we ended up being lifelong friends with. Um, and yeah, the, the, the pressures were good. I mean, like they salt the gate, was it probably it was an aging stadium, you know. I got the I got back end of a salt gate at the time. There was no like real um hospitality to sit in for the, for the children or for the parents or whatever. Like that. But it, it was a cracking stadium, it was a real old school stadium with proper atmosphere, like. Right? That's yeah, one definitely. thing, I'm, I'm a City fan, and we used to go Main Road, it was fantastic. I remember that atmosphere being a kid, but going to the Etihad, no, it looks good. It's nothing like, nothing like the old stadium. And I think Solgate was one of those stadiums, especially in like a night game or a cup game, it was absolutely a lot better spice. Yeah, cause it, especially because it was on top of the hill as well. So like the fog would come down and the mist would be swirling around and it was good in the evenings, wasn't it? You had to be up for it, yeah, it was always, in, it was always an occasion anyway. Yeah, it was good. So what was it like then? Because you've obviously come, went, came from a, a big club, a really big club, um, to then a, a, a smaller club with, a, like you say, a, a smaller unit of players. Um, was, was that a kind of a, a thing that you had to get used to or did it slot quite in quite easy? Um, I, suppose, I suppose at first it, it was a bit of a, like, I think I probably went trained a couple of times and then it was the Oldham against the Oldham. So it was a bit of a... I remember Shinna saying to me the first the first time I got there, and he said, "Can you play a channel ball, kid? Can you play it down the channel?" I said, I just say, "Get that long ball down the channel. That's all you need to do. Don't worry about anything else." Man, it was, it was got into it like it was. Uh, it was the transition to the, the, the style of football, I suppose, more than anything, more than the club. Because, like I say, it was all right. The, the facilities weren't the same, but it was, it was still a. Uh, it's still a football pitch, still going out to train every day, the lads. It was different. So I suppose what it was different to was playing with men, a lot more men, you know, like I said, Wayne Allison, um, uh, Steve Botherwick, uh, you know. So they were, they were real seasoned pros as well. They'd been around, they knew the game. But they were good. They looked after me, to be fair, you know, and like, they, they were all very good. And the chief as well, Wayne Allison, it was, it was always great with me. Because they could see, obviously, I was probably trying to transition as well. And it probably did take me. Um, so I remember getting this side and I went back out the side for a bit and then come in and eventually I made the spot man, I think, the second half of the season. Um, but I think that's what I probably needed, that bit of transition in between to actually get to grips with everything. And look, you know, again looking back, it was it was probably that was probably my period of transitioning and getting used. I didn't really go and never look back. It was like I was in, I was out for a game, in for a couple of games, and then eventually, you know, made it my own for the last time back end of the season. In training as well, obviously you're, you're training them with people like Bladwick and Allison and people like that. Do they they like kick you twice as hard? <laughs> um, they were all right. Do you know? Do you know? Blathers was a bit of a. He was a bit of a softy. We got to know him. He was he was brilliant in the air and that, but it wasn't really that. Now she never had a bit of bite. She never was definitely had a bit of bite. You know, if you didn't, he you, you went back in out of tackles. That was for sure. I'm just trying to remember who the other lads were in that. I mean, Kyle Paul, Paul Hall, all he was there at the time, a cracking character. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it, it was, it, there was no messing about, to be fair. It was proper training, 
I mean, we had to, that was one of the things that I got used to. We had to go and move the goals, so we get the goals and put them into position. You could, everything was done yourself, sort of thing. You, at the time, you went and washed your own kit as well. So that was something, you know, completely alien to me. But, you know, there's no, there's no worries on it. It was just something you had to get, you know, used to and put it into your lifestyle a bit. One, one, two, please, at a time, I don't think, actually watching. <laughs> <laughs> Did you keep any of those shirts? Have you got them kind of in the yeah, locker? Yeah, of course. I've got, some, I've got some in the training kit, yeah, yeah. I've got, uh, I've got quite a bit of it, yeah, yeah. I always keep the shirts. Every one for every home and away. For every... Um, I get people asking me all the time, and I didn't have it. I'd give a couple away in there, but I've not given too many away because, you know, you've got one of each and sort of thing, a bit of memorabilia. Yeah. And that first season with us, so you played like 32 games, I think, that season. So you did. Was that what I was on loan? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, on the loan season. Yeah. yeah. So 506. So you, you did kind of get that, take that place as your own, didn't you? I did a back end. Yeah. Like I say, there was a little bit of transition, I think, early on and what I've had. And then, and then um, I think it was the Bristol City game away. I think we played left back. I think Shinna got injured, actually. And Alex Bailey was on the right at the time, I think. Um, and then. Uh, what a game I think 1-5-2 away at Bristol City it was a cracking game I think um, Erster scored some a f- fantastic goal um, and then we, we never looked back really yeah. we, 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 I, I never looked back really from that I kind of made the spot and then we kind of continued and things went pretty well that, that, that season yeah we were all right and we were not always I can't remember where we finished but I think we we we, we did all right anyway. We, we didn't go down anyway, which is the main thing. So I think we finished about just below mid table. Yeah, sixteenth, I think. Yeah, was it? And, yeah. And you scored that season as well. So I think it was a was it away at Forest? I think home at Forest. It, was, it was one of my only two goals, but it was a good in that one. I, I my mum had actually done the card on the old skybox, but I can't I can't seem to get it off. It was um, yeah, it was I was left back again. So yeah, it would have been as I made me a spot my own and um, yeah, it was about. I don't, I'm putting, probably putting five yards in it every year, to be honest. Yeah, probably about 20, 25 yards but every year, putting over 30, 35 yards. It was a good one, though, yeah, a top corner. Um, it was a good one, that, because I remember, was it Ian Brecken, I think, might have played in that? And he ended up signing for Chester as well. Um, I don't think it was a game Jack played in, Jack Lester, but there was a game maybe when the, the year after. And um, you know, Jack had obviously signed it. Just him being a legend, he is. But uh, it was funny how we kind of met. We kind of was at each other's throats all game. They waited for me in the tunnel at half time as well. <laughs> it was called called to the manager at the time. I had to pull him off. He was trying to, he was trying to get. I was trying to get him. I was only like in nineteen. I was trying to argue with him. He was trying to get back at me and you know, dragged away and everything. And then when he signed on. Um, the year after, I think it was, mm. and he was there, but not spoken. He come over, he went joking over smile. I said, "I think we need to go and sort some out in the gym if you fancy it." <laughs> and we never looked back. To be fair, we was good friends. We've been away with each other, and he's a good friend of mine, Jack. Yeah, he was. Uh, I think quite similar, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, at the end of the 05 six so your loan season, you then got released, didn't you? By <laughs> did you? So, did you have? Did you have lots of options, or was it? Uh, I had a couple of options. Had a couple of options in the league. Um, I think it was Port Vale crew, but it was <coughs> it was more. I don't think it was. A, I think they might have been. I can't remember what the contracts were and everything at the time. But obviously, I'd, I'd, we finished quite well. I'd have not a bad end of the season. Um, and I spoke to Brian McClare, who's come in, and Brian McClare was saying, you know, you're not going to. If you stay here, if you get up, you have another year, you're going to be doing reserve football again. And I said, I don't see what that's going to do for your um, progress. You know, obviously, inevitably, I weren't going to get in the first team, you know. But so, you know, and he, he kind of recommended at the time, he said, you know, he'd been to Chesterfield, he'd be sat down and spoke about it. And just Rico and when I on the phone, you know, trying to sway me to come, then it kind of made my life a little bit, well, my decision a bit easier, you know, so over there I obviously had a relationship with some of the lads as well so it was something I, there was it was I suppose that they were trying to it was it was probably I would say old-fashioned the, the style at the time around, around Far- McFarland and Rickard but you could see they were trying to take the club forward a little bit and trying to do certain stuff and that obviously they've been talking about the new ground for quite a while even back then so it was a project I wanted to be involved and I thought it'd be a great you know 
opportunity for me to play more football as well. Yeah, it was definitely at that time because obviously we escaped on the last day of the season in the uh, uh, 03, 04 season, 04, 05 season. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think after that, it was very much like the, the project at the club to try and start playing a little bit more. And obviously when you came in and Paul Hall and people like that, there was definitely a sense that they wanted to kind of take it a bit differently. <clears throat> it felt like that, yeah. Yeah. Um... Obviously, Erst, I think Erst to come back for another year. He was obviously a good footballer. Um, Jimmy O'Hara, uh, he, he come, he come in. He was, he was a cracking football at the time as well. Um, so that you could see the style that we were trying to do, trying to play a bit, you know. Um, <clears throat> Mark Allett, he was, he, he, he probably one of the most underrated players going. Mark, he was, he was fantastic, technically fantastic. I mean, he was a striker. I don't hold him. I think before he, was, yeah. I think he was played up front with Chesterfield. I think, but he was a fantastic midfielder. He could, uh, he could do most things, Mark, tackle, head, fit, as fit as most of the kids, you know, young lads there as well. He was, he was, he was a cracking footballer, Mark. Yeah, and it's funny, like you say, it was it was quite a functional 4-4-2, wasn't it? Big big man, quick guy up front, good full-backs. Caleb, Caleb Fulham was there as well, only at the time, he was a big, was a big lad as well. <clears throat> raw at the time, real raw, you know, trying to work on his game and that, but like you say, it was... Um, yeah, we never only coming off, so it was kind of yeah, the rigid kind of four four two. But yeah, they were trying to play football, which suited me really. They tried to play a little bit of football. Obviously, you can't always do that on certain pitches and certain places. But yeah, in the main, it, it was quite good for me. You had quite a battle as well, didn't you? At full, we had a lot of good fullbacks during your time, didn't we? Like you said, you mentioned about Alex Bailey around that time. Jamie Lowry came Jamie through. Lowry, yeah. Um, he was on left back. He was on left yeah. side. She, 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 yeah, she was cracking left back at the time. I was coming to the end of it, but he was a good left back. Gregor Robertson, another another underrated player as well. He was a cracking player, Gregor. Um, but yeah, yeah, there was, there was there was always competition. That's for sure. Even coming through, like you say, Jamie Lowry he was a good footballer. Jamie, mm-hmm. probably a bit more suited to offensive um, at the time. I think that was that was where he was eventually going to go. But, um, but yeah, yeah, there's always competition, but you, you need that, don't you, to keep on your toes. And So so the second season, so 06, 07, uh, it's obviously League Cup run season. So, and you played, season, in, you, you played in Wolves, the Wolves game, didn't you? And I think you played, played in the Man City game. I did, I did. Um, scored a penalty in the Wolves, I think, actually, yeah. We won a penalties, didn't we? Mm. I think it was... Um, and then this, the, the City game, yeah. That was pro- that probably one of the most, uh, probably a, a big highlight, along getting promoted with the better, you know, it was a big highlight for me. Like playing against a Barrio team, who would watched it. Me and Paul Dickoff, you know, he's, he's a bit, not starstruck, but, you know, I've been watching him come through, you know, he got us promoted and everything like that. And uh, Joe Barton, I think, was there. Um, Richards, his kid coming through, Joe Hart. So it was, it was a, even though it probably was the best City team, it was still a... A, a strong, good squad. Samaras, yeah, there was, there was a few. Trevor Sinclair, yeah, it was, was a good squad. We played on the night. We played fantastic. We really did on that night. Um, on, on the build-up to that game, are you just thinking, don't get injured, don't get injured? <laughs> uh, I'll probably, as we, we go on and speak a bit further, it, again, <clears throat> as you look back, I never thought, I had many injuries, mate, really. Only kind of big ones, you know, like whatever ended me in that. Um, but... When I look back, I think I kept having them at the worst times ever. I was always injured at the worst times, you know, when we got promoted to Berry against Chesterfield, you know, everything was injured. Um, the cup run ended up missing West Ham, Charlton, as things were going um, pretty well at Berry again. It's go up back and I think, what do you have for? You got some, considering you didn't think anyone injured, now and again, you seem to pick your times anyway. A bit of problem fortune at the time, but that's football, I suppose. Yeah, and just back to that Man City game for a minute. It must have been, yeah, it must have been really cool then as a as a boy have fan. Did you have lots of friends and family there? Then, I'm guessing. Yeah, I did. Um, a lot of my family come, um, and quite a few of my friends come, and they actually they ran on the because they all ran on the pitch, didn't they, after the game? And uh, I remember a few of my friends coming on over to us like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> you know what I mean? All shouting and screaming. Um, but yeah, that, that that was that's another night at Salty Gate though, isn't it? You know, and that sort of night. It was, I think I'm pretty sure that was a cold night as well. I'm not sure which month it is, but it was a it was a it was definitely a good night. Um but it was something that I'll uh, always hold forever. But one of the disappointments on that was I remember Trevor Sinclair, I think he just you know, involved in one of the World Cups and he was playing on the left room against me. I had one of the 
one of the best games I've played probably. And uh, and I said to him, you know, can I get your shirt? I mean, uh, whatever it was, can't remember when it when I asked him, but. Um, obviously, we ended up beating two one. All the fans were on the pitch. They made a quick entrance and never seen him. So I didn't even, you know, I didn't even get one shirt for it. I was gutted, you know, <laughs> watching him all my life and everything like that. And I didn't even get a shirt. All oh, the lads were coming after the Joe Arts and everything like that because that's Trevor and he probably thought, "Oh, so this I'm getting off." You know, <laughs> didn't fancy any of it. I don't think he was the best player's like. Well, it's the trend nowadays. So if you can quickly knock up a sign and hold it up on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, seeing that. And Bruno wanna get you to if you would have killed us at the time, threw a chest old shirt over to the to someone though. <laughs> It's done really well here to get into the box and to uh, hang up across away by Rayner. Oh, what a strike! What a wonderful strike from Derek Niven! It's a fabulous goal of what is turning into a fabulous night for Chesterfield Football Club. You won't see a purer hit of the football anywhere, anytime. So we ended up, obviously the League Cup season was really good because we had a League Cup and everyone looks back now and uh, that's what you remember about that season. But we got relegated that season as well, didn't we? <laughs> Strange season should ne- for me. Should never have been. It got to that. It was um, it, there were some silly, silly mistakes. You know, that we give goals away. I remember at the time, people. You know, whoever it was, whatever. But you know, it was losing silly games all the time. And then I think you just one thing after the other just affected. Not knock on effect. And I, I can't remember when he lost to job right. I think it was probably it was before the end of the season. One, it? it didn't go to the end. Then. Um, and then Lee, obviously, the Lich has come in because the caretaker at first and got the job. But it should never, for me, have been relegated. Really. But to be fair, it was the it was probably another change where the direction where it was going. Because I know when Lee Richardson got the job after that, he he brought in some good good solid players. Then you know I think Jack, mm. um, I think Wardy coming before the season before it actually didn't he? But um, but he was another great addition. Um, then the Gregors, uh, Pete Levins and stuff like that. I think might have come in that, that year. Fletch down there, um, Steve Fletcher. Yeah. So it was, you know, you could see we were going to a bit more football again, which suited me massively. I was excited. It was, it, although we got relegated, it was disappointing. Really, it wasn't. Yeah, definitely was one of the worst. And along with the injury that ended up getting, it was definitely the worst. You know, I think that's. The perception you get sometimes, some players don't, you know, don't give a mon- don't give a monkeys, you know, especially when they look at the top level players. But the summer was ruined, you know. You just, some you just it was a write off. You just wanted to get back back there and you know do it right again. It was did never even after the defeat on a Saturday, you know, mm. you unite you unite your weekend. You know, it's all you do is retracing all in your head every time, all the time. Well, I was anyway, um, and. Uh, Getting relegated was like a full summer, you know, right off there. I'd, but I'd got another, so I'd do the two year. We got released, the one, we got, um, so we got relegated and then I got another year going into that. So I knew it was sticking around anyway and then <clears throat> seeing what was, seeing if we could make it a, a good one in the uh, League Two. Did you feel like you almost had to like prove yourself again when, because obviously you knew Lee Richardson, it, it like, you'd, that's been speaking to him right from the start uh, from when you first came, but then he became boss. And obviously I've spoken to quite a lot of players from around then and he, he he's maybe changed a little bit when he became boss. Um, a little bit. Yeah. I always had a bit of respect for him, Rico, because he was him and Ryan giving me my first professional um, debut. You know, that'd be grateful for that. Uh, but he did do strange things. He was, he was into psychology, which probably was before his time. It's quite a popular thing now, but it was some, I think especially for the older boys, Ollie and Chief and that, I think it was a bit like, what's going on here sort of thing, you know. Um, and he had his run-ins, I think, here and there with certain personnel. Um, I, I, I kind of respect him. He did, he did have a few different ideas and um, especially when I ended up going alone, he was, I would never have disagreed or anything like that, but didn't totally agree where he was going with certain aspects of his game. Um, we always tried to play football, and that's what kind of got us um, success early on in that. But 
as soon as he started going back, he you know, started putting centre halves at right full backs and centre half, and then you know defensive midfielders. You know, it was um, didn't really suit me. You know what I mean? It was kind of get the big men on now. Let's try and shore it up, sort of thing. But, um, so I know there is quite a few people that didn't really see eye to eye with Rico. Definitely along the way, um, but I always respected him. So he was always good to me. He, he, he always kind of. I think he was always behind me, especially at the start, but um, he had his ways, I think, and inevitably, I think he's, he probably was his, but it probably ended up getting him the, the sack in the end, a bit of mad ways, and he was definitely, he was into our psychology, I think that's what he's doing now, I'm not too sure where yeah, he's yeah. at, so I, but I think eventually that's probably his demise as well. It's the, the worst thing for me that he ever did was squad numbers. Like, he, he gave like, a, I remember at the time, like, Jamie Jackson was given the number three shirt, and like some people were giving really odd shirt numbers. I think that was psychology. I think that's what he was doing again. That was his. He, he, took, he did some crazy things like that. He did do some daft things, and he'd, he'd, he'd be on the right, a right bit of a low one, and he'd be he wouldn't, wouldn't be too happy. And then all of a sudden, he'd come in with the guitar, playing the guitar like out the blue. And it was like, <laughs> you know, you know, where's that come from? It's not even in the back, not even the best of frame of minds. Everyone, and he's coming. He's trying. He's probably just trying to get it all going again. Fair play to him, but. It probably just didn't work sometimes. Yeah, and like you mentioned, so like that first season when we were in, uh, when after we'd got relegated, I think we came like eighth, and you you played yeah, like should... thirty seven games, I think that season. So you played most yeah, of the games. Yeah, but that, again, there was t- there was a, uh, a touch of disappointment. That we should have got, we should have easily got promoted there. The squad, the squad that we had, <clears throat> not that it was full of stars, but it was a you could set, you could feel that he was in a good squad. The lads was all on this quite the same level. Um, yeah, Jamie Winter, um, uh, Peter Levin, you know, Warder. He was all quite young, lad. probably didn't, not were a lot of lads who had kids, you know, he was all in the kind of the same frame of mind of, you know, we'd all go for a dinner after it, we were in no rush um, to get up and train, so everyone kind of bonded a little bit and, and it was a good, good squad technically, it really was. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of talent, he was playing good football. Especially with a big flat, got a bit of diff, got a bit of everything, you know. Like you say, little and large, you had Warder, mm. Flatch, Jack. It was, it was a cracking, um, cracking team. And even though it were a bad season, it, we should, I think that was uh, an opportunity missed. Especially in my, in my career, anyway. I think there was an opportunity missed. No, definitely. How did you? How did your game kind of change over those three seasons? Because you played what hundred odd, probably over hundred games in three seasons so like how did the the things that you really love doing on a pitch and and stuff like that the things that you really like to get your teeth into how did that change over the years well it was a different play than when I come that was for sure you know from the reserves <clears throat> my game had changed you know I'd still try to play football <laughs> whenever I could it was just um there's certain decision makings that I'd, 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 you have to change you know Steve Fletcher up front don't want it in behind, for instance. You know what I mean? It's he's not running in behind, and Wardy does go in behind. So there was a lot of selection of the play that he had to change up. Um, but I think that it benefits your game massively. You know, it's not you know how many of us go and play for City and Liverpool and play out from the back like that. You know, it's, that this is that's this is football that we was playing. That's the this is the, the, the proper game that we was playing. That everyone probably ninety percent of us play, and um, it, it definitely made me a better player. Even decision making, you know, because we're the tallest, balls coming in, me having to, to get an advantage. So I used to the ball come over, I'd, 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 I'd nudge them. So as soon as they were trying to jump, they could, they, I would jump in before them every time. There's little decisions and things like that that I won, I won a lot, a lot more headers than I lost anyway. Do you know what I mean? Just for little things I picked up along the way. Three wins in four games, and Chesterfield's winter is warming up. Drew Talbot's first goal for the club proved enough to seal a win at Notts County. It was far from comfortable, though. Goalkeeper Tommy Lee will have been relieved to see John Thompson's effort drift narrowly wide of the target. But not quite as relieved as teammate Daniel Hall. Sent off after a second yellow card, he gave the home side an advantage which they failed to turn into goals. Yeah, and then there was that weird thing when you went on loan to Notts County. Um, but but you were allowed to play against Chesterfield <laughs> when you were on loan. <laughs> that was a record moment again. He kind of rang me up before it and was like talking about it, but didn't say it was happening. Then I found out off Charlie, who the um, Charlie, what's it called now? 
the what's kind of manager at the time. Charlie, anyway, but the um, a bit pile on one it, yeah, that was it. And he he kind of let me know, and I was like, stupid, but that's Rico again, you know. He's probably thinking, oh, I might have an edge here, know what he's like, and what have you. I nearly ended up coming off back there. I remember it in the post in that match. It was a tough one for me that. I wish I would have been put in that situation to be honest with you because I was playing against my mates who was playing with early on the season uh, and it could have went the other way for him. I know that Chesterfield ended up winning. I think it was a, a great strike by Drew Talbot at the time. It was, <clears throat> other than that, it was a pretty tight game. It could have went either way. You know, it could have knackered him that really, Rico. You know, it come off for him in the end, but um, it, 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 it was a bit of a strange one. That. A bit disappointed how it went that really because uh, I enjoyed my time at Knox County, don't get me wrong, but I still felt like it was Jessica played as well, especially when you played against them. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was odd anyway. It was, uh, yeah. I remember at the time thinking, oh, what does that mean? So I, I can imagine if the fans were thinking that, then <laughs> for yourself, even well, after that yeah. match, you must be thinking, what's that? The lads did. That's what was strange about the lads. Were like, what's he doing? Sort of thing. You know, what you, what, how are you even doing? You, you know, they knew what was capable of the lads and thought, I could have a bleeding world here. And, you know, knacker us off whoever's playing against you. Know, but anyway, it was one of those things. And uh, he, he actually, I think Charlie at the time, he kind of turned around to me and said, it's up to you. You don't have to play, but there's no chance of going to back out of the game when he's, you know, had that opportunity. So, um, but I'd still go back to Chesterfield after it. And Rico was always great. You know, still like, that was Rico though. It was no like, well, you know, awkwardness or nothing like that. He was like, he thought he was all great, like it was done, but that, that was how he was, I suppose. And, um, like I say, I come back and uh, by the time I come back that season, he got the sack, obviously, haven't he? Yeah, and moves on. Yeah. What, what's it like on the pitch? Like, <laughs> but the, the other Chesterfield players coming up, all right, Phil. <laughs> yeah, like... this is it. Hey, do you know what? He felt like that for a long time, though, even when I was at Berry, uh, <clears throat> Berry eventually. I always, Chesterfield felt like, because it was this way I kind of grew up as a, as a man as well, kind of sort of thing. And then there was a lot of people there that I knew. So it always felt strange. Not strange, but it always felt like, you know, this is where I was sort of thing. You know, I can see where people, when they've been somewhere for like 10 years and they go back, I couldn't, you know, I bet, I bet that's massively odd for them how, how it goes about. Um, and, then, and then, like you said, so Lee Richardson then left. Um, we kind of just missed out on playoffs. Both both those seasons really, which like you mentioned, was disappointing because there was definitely the 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 people in that squad to have got promoted. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. but then John Sheridan comes in, doesn't he? So you actually were here for the last season at Saltergate. I was, yeah. I, I was actually offered I was offered a contract to Notts County. Um, they weren't willing to <clears throat> spend any more big money anyway, whatever what money they wanted, um, and I got offered it and. At the time, with Chef's coming in, it was kind of, no, I want him kind of back. I want to, you know, I want him involved in everything like that. Um, I suppose at the time, even though, looking back again, it was, I don't know if I was ready for the change, maybe. Mm. I didn't want to obviously leave Chesterfield, but I don't know if I was ready for the, you know, what had went on <clears throat> at the back end. They missed out on promotion. And there was a project going on and on. And uh, Knox County, which eventually ended up with Sam Gore Erickson coming in out of that caper. Um, and I was a little bit swayed which way to go. And anyway, it was, my hand was forced to come back, which was, which was fine. You know, I was coming back to Chesterfield, it was, it was no problem at all. And um, I was straight back into the team again. And we seemed to have a good relationship at first with John, but we probably didn't see eye to eye. I mean, she has too much. Um, and he ran its course in the end. I think he was wanting to go one direction and he was trying to change things up. I think Any, anyone that was there, he was trying to do the old, you know, change. you know, he was quite close to Mark actually, which, you know, I think he kept, but other than that, he, you know, he was trying to change all, everything around there. I was going to say, it was a weird time as well because like the stadium was painted green, wasn't it? Because they'd done the Damned United filming in that summer. So it was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember him filming. I think it was pre season. We come in, they were still knocking about and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they wanted, they wanted an old-fashioned looking stadium. Though, didn't they? Got it. They, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's interesting you say with John Sheridan. So did you did you feel like maybe your time was coming up? Not then? At first, no, not at first. He was he was all for it at first. It was it was in the squad and um, it, it, 
he was right behind me. He was, the way he was talking and everything, he was happy and everything like that. Um, you know, he was he was a good man. He was a good player, Chesham, but I don't totally agree with everything how he manages. I know he did well for Chesterfield. I don't some of his methods. I don't think and uh, um, particularly how I go about. Anyway, you know what I mean. There were certain ways of. I don't know. He belittled people sometimes a little bit, which didn't really agree with him. <clears throat> It's a bit of red rag to me, really. So we had a bit of a to do now. And nothing major fallout, but said certain things I weren't too happy with. So by the probably mid season, I played quite a bit and I was in and out, in out. And then by the mid season, we kind of had a course where I think we both knew where it was going at the end of it. Yeah. You know, it was uh, disappointing, really, because going into this new stadium, you know, I don't know, there was a lot of. And if if it would have been different, you know, I would have loved to have stuck around, you know what I mean, by any means. But I think it was probably time for a change on both parties, probably. With Shazzy's side and, uh, and for me. Mm. You you were on the bench, weren't you, for the last game against Bournemouth? Never, yeah, they didn't never do well. So now I scored them goal, sort of goals as well. I know. Yeah, I remember being up in the stand, yeah. Uh, you know, doing the, <clears throat> doing the commentary and that. It was nice. It, it, it was great to be part of it and being involved in it. It was a fun, like I said, fantastic one of the games of Chesterfield. Loved, loved the place. Had great times. You know, it was sad to see you go. Um, but I had that tinge of, because I weren't involved as well, where I was moving on as well. It was sort of a bit of a bittersweet, really, for my, you know, you'd involved in this iconic moment for Chesterfield. But at the same time, you know, really, you're leaving next year. It was a bit of a bittersweet. So you ended up at Berry, didn't you? And, and you played a lot of games for Berry, didn't you? Played the best football, probably, arguably. You know, <clears throat> played some good, some you know, good times at Chesterfield, but probably uh, the best football. It's coming to what was it, twenty four, something like that. Um, and it was Alan Nil. Obviously, Alan Nil had been the assistant <laughs> at, um, with uh, with Rico, and he was he, he was he was he was probably the best trainer I played with. You know, the uh, coach. Mm. He weren't the weren't the like a manager sort, probably. Even though he didn't end up being a manager, he, he was he was a great coach and uh, man manager, I suppose. He got everyone on side, and you know everyone liked him or have you. And uh, he gave me a phone call. Of this. So we knew what the crap was. It left it left it a bit. I had a couple of options to go and train, and somebody was offering me years in and there. And obviously, Benny being local, um, and I don't know being there. It was it was a uh, it was just something that we. You know, that I took up at first, just going, feeling it out, really. I was going to go to a couple of places, but I ended up going there, <clears throat> just staying there, really, and then enjoying it, and then off of the contracts, you know. And then, mm. and I probably played, like I said, the best football I played, because uh, like, they were, like I said, Alan Nilly, Rico tried playing football as well, but Nilly was all total football coming out, which was nice to be part of. Yeah, and it was a, a good ding dong race for the title, wasn't it? So it was Chesterfield Berry kind of first second, wasn't it, that season? <laughs> it was, it was. Um because like again, playing against my old, you know, my old, my old team, it was strange. You know, I've been in Chesterfield so long, you played against I don't want a snippet of it with Knox Gower, but with uh playing against the, the lads, because like I say, Tommy Lee, um, Mark Haller, Jack was still there. All very good good friends of mine, do you know what I mean? It was uh it, it was odd to back, but then as the season went on, you could see us getting better and better. Obviously, I always looked out for the Chesterfield games. Both the lads, you could see that everyone was improving. Because I think we, I think Barry at the time were like second favourites to go, to go down. They had a great season, the season before. And Alan was kind of reconstructing a new team. And then it was, uh, you could see that both teams getting better and better and better. Um, the likes of Drew Talbot, didn't even players like that, which were yeah. good, good players, yeah. So you, you could see it was going, going places. And uh, we, we actually, uh, I used to go out still, we used to go out for a drink now and again and we used to go out with Chesterfield lads. <laughs> so it'd be like, um, I don't think Dan was there at the time, Dan Gardner and a few of the lads, uh, Whitaker, um, Alec, so we used to go out for the drinks still, you know, so we was playing against each other, they had against the, and it was, in the end it was neck and neck, wasn't it? We ended up getting promoted, uh, ironically, at, um, at Chesterfield, so. I was going to say, Barry kind of pooped the party a bit by coming yeah, yeah. on a, on their own ground. Do you know what though? It, it was great again, like I say, looking back again, I got injured. We'd played played all see but missed the game really. And get injured like 
two games before the Chesterfield game. And you could see something building towards that and looking forward to it and think, here we go, it'll be a great occasion. And uh, end up getting bloody ill. And he actually, uh, 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 told me, I'm just thinking it was. It was like a third grade. It was, it was a pretty bad tear. But then I woke up on that morning with a match. I was always going to travel and come over. I travelled the squad. Uh, I had food poisoning that night. So I nearly didn't make it. I was on my last legs that, that, that day. So everyone was, you know, I was trying, I needed any bit of energy because we were running around the bleeding stadium, you know, everyone was celebrating and it was Jack scoring, then Lowy scoring, you know, Ryan Lowe scoring. It was fans on the pitch, off the pitch. It was, it was, it was some game. One of the, probably one of the best games I've been involved in, definitely, for, um, for atmosphere and end to end. It was a cracking game. A near capacity crowd turned out for the battle of the top two as Berry went in search of the win that would ensure this was a League One fixture next season. The visitors struck first. Leeds Loney Tom Lees headed home his third goal in four games to open the scoring after just 12 minutes. The Sparites were chasing the win that would see them crowned as champions and they hit back five minutes after the restart. Craig Davis pounced on a loose ball to smash home his 25th goal of the season. But the leaders weren't level for long. Just five minutes later, Berry restored the advantage. David Worrell found himself in the right place at the right to put the Shakers on track for a sixth successive win. 2,000 travelling fans struggled to contain their excitement. This was now a thrilling contest, and Chesterfield responded again. Jack Lester made it 2-2 just past the hour to lift their hopes of claiming the silverware. The pitch invasion was premature, and once it had cleared, Berry pushed on for the win that caps a remarkable campaign. And who better to send them up than top scorer Ryan Lowe? Results elsewhere meant the strikers' 26th goal of the campaign rubber stamped their promotion to the third tier. Totally missed those games. Obviously, now we've fallen out of the league. You look back at games like <laughs> Chesterfield Berry, and you think, oh, those are the, the good old days. But it's kind of gone south for both, hasn't it? I don't know, you know, you go into you go into these clubs and then they're getting administration and they're getting dingy, but it looks like we're on the up, just feel which you yeah. I mean you go to the stadium, it's fantastic, in it, the setup and last time I was there, I think it was uh, Tommy's uh, testimonial. It seems just deserves to be in the league. If not, you know, even I it's a cracking stadium, you know. The fans get rocking as well, Joe, you know, when when they get when the, when the team's doing well. So Hopefully, touch wood, they can get back to them sort of games earlier. Yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be great. Uh, and, and with Berry as well, you you take part in one of the benefit games a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? I did, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, Radcliffe. It, it, I mean, it's a travesty, isn't it? What's what's happened? <clears throat> you know, I don't I don't know if Chesterfield. I don't, I don't know if you've ever heard of them going anywhere near to that, really, but. The uh, the way I think these guys come in and spent oh, the guy before Stuart Day things coming and spent the money because there was lads as I was injured coming in and, and big money and you wondered where you're gonna get it from at the end of the day they, you're only getting five six thousand every every week it's not like you're getting forty thousand to pay for these um, so and then obviously to to go out there was the, I think a few of the players come I think Ryan Low and you know a few of the old players we've got promoted at the time and that all got together which was, which was nice you know. Try and get together. I think there's some hope, I think, as well, that it might be coming back you know, in some sort of capacity, you know, in some one of the leagues. So, hopefully, again, it's very, very similar club to Chesterfield, better, you know, you know, the kit man personally, you know, probably as well, a lot of clubs, but it just feels like in that sort of town, Chesterfield, the town, and Berry, it's, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice environment, you know, you get close to the fans, everyone around, very, very similar. And luckily enough, I've got the privilege to play for both of them. Yeah. As a, as a, Player, I've always kind of wondered uh, that as when when you have kind of chairmen that are sometimes going off and doing all these crackers things, of which at Chesterfield we've had a few times. Like at players, if you're ever in a club at that time, are you kind of as much in the dark as the fans are, or do you kind of pick things up? <laughs> no, you're in the dark. Yeah, but you're the chairman sort of thing. Um, with the chairman sort of, you, you hear rumours, don't you, and whispers and stuff like that. But you, you, you're more or less. You, you, you kept away from any sort of finance. I mean, the old school ones were, were great, like, say, Barry Hubbard. Uh, Barry was Brian Fenton at the time. You know, they used to come in after the game a lot more, you know, 
involved, I suppose, you know, in hands on and probably run the club properly, you know, all right, they might not have spent a lot of money, but they were definitely um, running it for the benefit of the club, which you can't say that about and some of the other owners that come in, in the end. Um, I mean, Stuart Day, I only met my fans full of times and it seemed all right, but you're dicing with people's livelihoods, you know, if people are going to the match, you can imagine not having Chesterfield to, you know, watch and look out for the score, it's scandalous, I can't, I can't, can't even process that. Anyone again? I know you spend money and you know it's tight, especially being you know in the lower leagues. But you can't risk not having the club, these sort of clubs that have been around for that long. You know, it's, it's madness in my eyes. Yeah, totally. And and you mentioned like injuries. So you retired, didn't you, when you were were you, were you like 29, 30, something like that? Yeah, no, I think young. No, I was about twenty eight. I think something like even younger. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was that was the lowest point, lowest point of my life, really. You know what I mean. Luckily enough, I've not had too many <clears throat> knocks and bruises on the way to you know, such way. but that was definitely mentally tough for me. It's something I've done all my life. You know, consistently, pretty much played. You know, along so I was always playing. And then I think I signed a new two-year contract. It was in League One. We've been promoted. Uh, oh no, we stayed in the League One. We stayed up. It was the, the next season. And I just, um, I think it was against Preston. And I just landed for her. And I thought I broke my leg. But I looked, I thought, oh, I got away with that one. You know, you know, not, I've not done that too bad. And then um, got up and put a couple of steps and it felt like my knee was just flapping around. You know, that, there was nothing connected. I thought, don't feel right. Oh, no. And then the doctor come in, no, no, it's fine. It should be, uh, you know, it's not your cruise shirt. I can feel it intact. Well, oh, that's good. And then I uh, got the scan, and then it was just, I think it just went, I can't even remember the two looking back, I can't remember them, them times too much, it was just a blur. I was, I was probably wife would tell you better, I think it was probably most miserable, you know, for about 18 months, maybe longer, it, I was injured, you know, never used to being, like, you have a few injuries, you know, for a month or so, but this was uh, nearly two years injured, and sometimes in the gym on your own, you know, every day trying to motivate yourself. I was 100%. You probably ask most people, you know, I was in the gym, I tried everything possible to gain an advantage, and that's what I was doing then. But mentally, it was, it was tough. <clears throat> I got myself back to, uh, so, so I'd done it, and then we were recovering, and then went to an altitude chamber for fitness, <clears throat> doing boxing inside it. But it was wet everywhere, it was condensation and slipped. And we we kind of done it again, like probably six seven months in, you know, trying to get somewhere to park, and um, ended up having a second ACL reconstruction. The first one I had my hamstring, the second one I had a deceased Achilles, you know, from a mm. body old body whatever, and so to redo my, my, my uh, cruciate because it had gone again. And then, so I'm coming back, I got an infection. I come home from a walk, and my knee had ballooned that big. I remember going to the hospital in uh, North Manchester, and they were draining it, and there was just rubbish coming down, pus and everything coming out of my knee. And um, I was nearly fainting. I was like, all over the shop, trying to walk me around and everything like that. I was in, ended up in the hospital for two weeks, and I, you know, it, it was pretty serious, you know what I mean? And then I thought, I, I don't know. Obviously, I was going to do everything again to come back, but I thought it definitely crossed my mind. Then saying, I can't see myself coming back. I probably had another, <clears throat> I had another year's contract. Maybe it might have went into that year. I thought, oh no, I've got a chance, you know, to come back. But it definitely crossed my mind thinking, I don't think you can come back from this. And I built it up, <clears throat> done everything again I could, built all the muscle, done every exercise you can think of, trying to get everything. And um, I'm just getting a pain in my knee, just kept getting a some sharp pain, didn't think anything of it, I just thought, oh, it might be a bit of gristle in after that, you know. And I went to, this time, because of the infection, I kind of, the old physio, uh, the old surgeon that I was in touch with, it, it didn't, and well, sort of thing, he, he didn't sort of get involved, he kind of wiped his hands with me. So uh, I went to my old United, which I should have went from the start, and I went to John Davin, the physio at uh, Man United. Um, he put me in touch with these, the United. They've done all the old boys, you know, I said Paul, who's called, retired now, fantastic surgeon. 
And I went there and he felt it. He went, your cruise ship's gone. I said, I went I said, I'm playing reserve team football now. I'm coming back. He said, it's not, you're crucial, you, the only reason you're playing is because you built your muscle around it that much. It's just protecting at the moment. Eventually, it's just going to, your legs are just going to go. Mm. I was like, man, well, it's the third one. What do you do? He said, that's it, I'm afraid. You have to look in some sort of, like sat down with a physio, thinking of coming back to reserve team football. Got, it was David Flitcroft coming at the time. I was excited to play for him because he was right behind me. Come get yourself back and everything, you know, confidence boost and everything. Betty was trying to do stuff as well at the time. Obviously, like Stuart Day coming in. And um, it was like, like a busted it, yeah. I can't explain the feeling. It was just like black and white sort of looking at the physio and he's just saying, well, you could see him tearing up, you know, gutted for me. You know, worked that hard for two years now. And then it was just told that you need to find another job. That's not you anymore. You're not playing football. It was, it was heartbreaking, really. And even though it was tough then at the start of two years, that that really pushed you to the edge, you know, of you can see why <clears throat> footballers get the a lot of support. Now, as soon as I'd done that, I got a phone call for PFA kind of saying, How are you? I was like, Yeah, I'm all right, you know, no, are you mentally, you know, do you need to talk? Luckily if I've got a good family and friends, you know, to but I couldn't ever imagine, I couldn't imagine people having not that support network and you know, the, the, I think it was Asher Williams from the PFA said he speaks to uh, people when they have these sort of injuries and they say, what's your education? What's your interest? Football. The job is football. What, what are they doing? What are you going to go and do now? You know, sort of thing you're starting from scratch. You know, it's it's scarier. Um, I just sum it that I had to process slower, but I was, you know, I weren't, I weren't, I mean, my wife's saying, you weren't me for months. You know, you just glazed, sort of stuff. Which probably were great for me, to be fair. Got texts of all the old Chesterfield lads, you know, you know, they've won there and what have you. And Benny were great looking after me and wanted me to get involved in the coaching side because I already had certain badges on which to get involved. <clears throat> but I'd always um, had something in, in the pipeline anyway. Um, and I think I'd, uh, I'd had enough of football, I think, at that time. I was kind of uh, deflated. To start getting up, which Flickers at the time, David Flicker, I thought me to get him involved with his coaching staff. And Ben Fletcher as well, he was getting like a young thing together. What I might be going to talk here away on a Friday and a Tuesday night, going scouting and being up at, you know, it, I had to, you have to have that fight in your belly, don't you, to, yeah. to want to do that. So and I don't think it was there after the after the injury. I just think it was, uh, I was kind of done, sort of thing. You know, I couldn't believe I'd ever say that, you know, about football, but. Mentally, it was it was tough. I was going to say it's, it's it's interesting because I've I've spoken to what just under forty players this year. The amount of them that have had really bad knee injuries, like Drew Talbot was talking about when he had his and it got infected, and it was like what he called like silly string was coming out of his knee. And, and yeah, Jamie Simpson. Lowry was the same. He was saying that you know he he thought that he might not be able <laughs> to walk or do a five k run. Do you know what, Bill, Jamie Lowry nearly scared me for life with that and I remember look when I did my knee and looking back thinking I can't be like Lowe's I don't know how he went with Jamie Lowry now, you know because I was playing at the time and he was having his rehabilitation but I remember the screams coming from the um, physio table I don't know if that was, this was a thing that he should have been doing or he said we would do it now but you used to have to try and make sure you, your knee was flexing, you know, didn't stiffen up in that. And I remember his knee was swollen and bending it over and trying to get all the gristle and everything out. Screams. He used to be putting himself I used to think, what the... He used to think, wow. And then he did it, though. Every... Coming from training, was in the physio. You, you did it going on. you think, what the... you think somebody was having a baby. It was that loud, some of the things. I remember doing it and thinking, we can't get to that. That can't be... Can't accept that. And I, I can imagine Lowe's are not... Kept in touch with a good lad, Jamie. He was always a good friend, like, but I'm not sure how his leg is now or his knee, but I'm guessing he probably does have a few problems with it. Because I know I do, even, and I don't think it was as bad as what he had. Uh, so I suppose is it, there's, it takes a while then, doesn't it, for you to transition out of being a footballer just into life? You can lose your identity, I suppose. It comes up on that Sky Sports News, still picking to retire from football, mm. and all the texts come in. <laughs> um, it kind of 
Oh, you said you've seen it in a different light, you know. So not not a failure by any means, but you know, I, I played. I had the privilege of playing for the clubs in two hundred and fifty league games and a promotion, playing against a borrowed team, captain in certain sides. You know, I couldn't ever dream of that when I was younger. But he still felt robbed. I felt robbed of a you know. I should, I should have had another two hundred and fifty league appearances for for me. I was a, I was a player who played. You know, we weren't a, a striker that plays every you know certain games. I was. So um, I feel I felt robbed, and I think I think people kind of see it as the old football, the old retired football. I suppose it's quite soon, you know. You think what we're going to get up to, what we're going to do in that, and um, like I say, even after I retired, I didn't really get into much. You, you know, you still tune and fro. I did have something like I say in the pipeline, but I didn't really um, didn't really commit to it for months, really, because you're still in that sort of. That sort of shock, really. Um, <clears throat> especially at 20, I can't remember, I think it was 27 or something like that. You know, it's not like you was 34, 35, you're ready to, you know, probably pack it in. You you know, you can accept it, but not at that age. It was a tough one, really. I was going to say, because uh, I suppose you very much have, like, occupation footballer, don't you? Like, at what point do you actually kind of let go of that occupation footballer tag? I suppose it just... Ends overnight, doesn't it? I suppose. Well, that's the thing. You, you kind of wake up and you're not going. <clears throat> the worst thing was just not going into training. All those, the the last bit of my career was being injured. You're not going into training. You're not going into the complex. I remember, <clears throat> like as Betty was saying, come in. You know, come in when you want. And I did a couple of times, but I felt so out of it. Mm. I felt like a million miles because he said to me, he said, "I know you, Pix." He said. I'd done it. I went come away from football. I tried something new. It weren't me. I had to come back out. He said, "But you're not. You're not that." He got it wrong, like because well, I knew it once put me into it. I knew what I was going to do, but he, he thought there's no chance. You know, you, you need to be involved in everything. And, and I, I tried it. I tried to bring myself in, and he was just seeing the lads come in or go out for training. It was like saying hello to the lads, but they were doing the wrong thing. Then mm. run for the season. They had goals. They weren't really. I was involved. It was a, uh, it was a strange, strange feeling. It really was. It, it was, uh, like I say, give it a go. You know, coming in a couple of times and to give that trend, You know, trying to get involved. And it does, like you say, it happens overnight. You know, you're not going to training. That's it. You don't you dusted. What, what you're up to now? You know, and I was in. Obviously, I was injured for quite a bit. Um, so you have that in your mind just in case, but you don't ever expect that you have to retire. Especially when I was getting so near to get coming back. Yeah. Um, it was uh, it, like you say. It was you wake up, you, you leave the club at the end of the season. You wake up in the summer. Usually, have the summer getting ready for the you know the next season, and you're done. That's it. But like you say, it's not uncommon, is it? You know. No, no it's, it's uh, the amount of players I've spoken to that actually retired on their own terms. It's minimal in terms of the players I've spoken to. I mean, if you look at the stats of even getting a prof- being a professional. Even then, I think that even the range, the 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 length of the professional, I think it's like four years or something, three years. So to get a, a decent amount, of, you know, I'm proud and privileged, but it's uh, it's still there's still hard one to even talk about, really. Yeah. What what did you end up moving into then? If you don't mind me asking. The, we got a, my old man and um, my cousin, and that have always all my life I've been in, involved going out with my old man to work and that. he was a plumbing eating. It's like a contractor's job for builders. Um, and uh, he built it from nothing really, come from Glasgow, my old man, and <clears throat> got lucky when he was in and built and couldn't done it. And, you know, got the certain builds and does help me do like a new developments, commercial and what have you. Um, and I've always been involved in it, so I've always knew about it, you know, and we're, we're not by any means, as you know, I'm, when we're new ages, we can't just retire and start going off to Dubai living forever. We haven't got that. We have to keep working, whether it's in football or not. So I always had it in my mind. Um, so once I'd had, like to say, that few months from, you know, being retired, I kind of just, it was enough, it was enough. I had to, my old man kind of said, come on, you need to get into it. So I kind of threw myself into it. I kind of lost, probably touched football, definitely then, you know, it was kind of put on the back burner, even speaking to the lad really. It was kind of putting. I was just throwing myself into retraining. I suppose not. I'm not 
not in sight really anymore. I kind of just day to day running the business and stuff like that. It's, it's a massive change for me. Very similar, plums and footballers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it can be a bit, uh, they can be a bit um, temperamental. That's the, uh, <laughs> can be a bit na- feisty as well, yeah. <laughs> not, not too, many, not too uh, far apart, really. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Great. Well, I've got some, I've got a couple of, uh, a few uh, listener questions for you before we finish. So, yeah. I mean, this, the, some of them are a bit, I mean, this is Chesterfield pants for you, just before we start. <laughs> um, so the first question from Ewan was, uh, do you remember having your photo taken with a six-year-old at Faro Airport in Portugal in 2005? I can't believe he's here, yeah, because it's me and my miss, me and my wife now, and it was coming through. <clears throat> Obviously, that was just as a sign for United, uh, sign for Chesterfield, that. So it was only reserved to play, and then coming through there, and someone's asking for a photo. You know, like, the moose was like, "What's going on here?" Sort of thing. You know, who do you think you're at? Sort of thing. But I remember that I do clear as day. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, very nice of him. Yeah, always nice, isn't it, to be recognised. Uh, you know what you do, and the fans getting involved. It was, I do remember that. Well, it's nice as well, isn't it? If you, you know, uh, all these years on from playing for Chesterfield, nearly 150 odd games, people still think of you really fondly and. That's, it makes it all worthwhile, I suppose. Mm. You know what I mean? It's you know, it's nice to even to be able to do this. You know, you've done something. It feels like a lifetime ago now, but you've done something that has put a bit of an imprint in people's life. You know, and you've done. You know, it weren't it weren't all for nothing, I suppose. Yeah, no, definitely not, definitely not. And uh, uh, Marcus says, uh, Brad or Zanzibar? What was he called? No, my memory's getting terrible. From VK, sponsored by VK, weren't we all the time? Yeah, Santi, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I've got, I've got quite. I've not spoke to him for a while, but we was always quite uh, spoke to each other quite a bit. And he always sorted us out. We used to, yeah, we used to go out quite a bit. To be fair, around um, Gaz Davis, uh, stayed in New all the places he didn't. They'd be in the Chester with local lads and that. So he used to take us all. Adam Smith, I think, was there at the time. Yeah, we used to had a cracking time. Had a really good do around there. Yeah, I think it was that Sunday. Was that the big one? Was it? Mm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that good one. Yeah. Um, Mark says, I mean, this is just. Typical. Um, if you were to do a Spotify playlist, uh, would you then call it a pick and mix? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. You I've, had, need... I've, had so, I've had some takes on that, you know. <laughs> I've got my name, every sort of way you could spell it and say it, and you're, you know, you've had everything. Don't worry about that. It's an unusual <laughs> one, isn't it? You know, you, you don't, don't see many of them. You, you don't at all, no. And this next one, uh, it's obviously probably you thought it might come up, but Mark Hill says, what happened with Tommy Lee? And we did have Tommy Lee on the podcast, yeah. you know, with the, with his jaw. And and he kind of, all he said was that, uh, because obviously the, it was really weird at the time, the rumour went around, Phil Picken and Tommy Lee have had a fight. And you're thinking, but they're like mates from Manchester days. Surely not. Um, and all he said was that he would say that um, you didn't break his jaw, but you might have been a contributing factor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't have to comment if you don't want to. No, just uh, it was in Sheffield, wasn't it? I think it was out with Sheffield and a bit of a to do. Um, and Tommy, Tommy's it's great. I love Tommy's one of my good, good friends, but he's uh, he, he's, he's just sometimes a bit oblivious to things that are going on. I think he might have walked into the line of fire, which was there was no need of getting anywhere near that. Walked in and we ended up. Uh, it was bad that actually because I remember I'm thinking about making the phone call to Rico, all of us, you know, me, <clears throat> Paul Arsley, great thinking we've got to tell him. Because we thought, oh, we just, you know, knocked his tooth out. Mm. Right, we'll, we'll crack on with it. It turned out nothing but, you know, fair from the truth. Um, probably silly looking back, you know what it's like, you know, you're younger and being daft and that, but it was uh, probably one of the best moments to tell you that. Having to tell the manager that he's going to be out for bleeding months as well. And, and then that rumour goes about, and after the conversation with Rick, I know it's always it's always popped up that, but I can assure you, I'd never uh, I'd never lay a finger on him. He's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, and I was saying to when I said to Tommy, you know, I said when you when you appeared at his testimonial, I think I everyone believe he's like, coming up to Tommy. All the all the promotions Tommy's got and everything at Chesterfield, and he's still getting asked about that. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was really relieved when you turned up for his testimonial. So they were like, oh, the oh, good friends. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know all his family, his brothers. I was actually with him when he met his um, 
his wife now, yeah, he got married. He's just been married, having lockdowns with him when he met set. Um, don't see him half as much now. He sounds like he's doing brilliantly, but um, we need to keep in touch. We have to catch up with COVID and, and my two children being young. It's been it's been tough to keep in touch with everyone, but it's something that I'm going to definitely get going again. Yeah, and, and last couple of questions. So, uh, Jamie Winter says, um, do you remember your first Old Firm match? Oh, Jamie Winter's asked that. Yeah. Did you, I, I'm a Rangers man as well because my old man from Glasgow. Jamie was Rangers. Um, Pete Levin was Rangers. He was cutting me half his Rangers. And we went down, me, Pete, Jamie, Fletch come with us, took the big southern Fletch, a big six, stuck out like a sore thumb with his hair and his tan and his everything. <laughs> and um, Jamie Lowry come and Jimmy, we come out a great time. It was one of the that is the best atmosphere bar none I've ever seen. We was in the away end of Celtic Park, and then um, we got being beat two one off Celtic, but they got back to one all. It was that, that was incredible, it was an unbelievable uh, experience. But we went down Glasgow before it with Pet, um, Pete Levin's. Family and people in the pubs, but they are the real old, old school Scottish lads. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a follow up to that question, so Peter, Peter Levin then popped up with, um, do you remember the UA, UA Cup final, Rangers versus, versus Zenit? So that was in Manchester, wasn't oh, it? Oh, nights out. This is what I'm renowned for, the nights out, <laughs> isn't like it? I think. It? <laughs> um, yeah, they come to my range jumper Rangers. Virtually trashed Manchester there, like, there was thousands of them they come into Manchester and Pete come down. I was, when was that season then? Because he, he was, so, he would think Pete left that season. Because he was doing well at Chester at the time. Um, and he must have, did MK Dons, I think he went to? Yeah, he was with us for a season, wasn't he? <clears throat> yeah, he'd done a, he was a cracking play, Pad. And um, yeah, I remember him coming down with a good, uh, it's always interesting with Pete. Yeah, we have a good, we a good, we a good uh, drink in that. I've not, I've not spoke to him for a while. Uh, he's one of the ones that actually I've seen. He spoke to him. He's over in is it Russia. Mm, yeah, yeah. Good on him. Yeah, he could do. He could put. He's, he's, he's got the gift of the gab, the lad. And he's, uh, he was, he was a bad player to tell you that. And a nice left foot as well. So, yeah, I've not seen him for a while. Yeah, he could do. Good times. So, so just to kind of finish off, then, I just wondered. What your kind of uh, biggest memories were then at, at Chesterfield? Was it kind of that Man City game and, and things like that? <laughs> Overall, yeah, um, of football, you know, matching and everything. Some cracking games played, you know, at the um, at Bristol City games, you know, some cracking stadiums, Chesterfield getting some great wins, you know, when we weren't expected to. Mm. Um, definitely the City game is a big, a big, um, Taking my, you know, in the career, definitely. But um, just, I just remember the game, really. You know, the old camaraderie of it. Say like Jamie Hewitt, um, Phil at the time, and the master uh, Jeff. You know, I just yeah. I want to go back to the things I see on the score tank. You know, all them sort of people. You just, uh, I think the overriding is just, just the experience at the time, and you know, a sense. I wish you would have won some. I know you, you guys went on and. You end up getting them doing well, you know, getting um, the FA Cup what trophy was the uh, yeah paint you, paint trophy yeah yeah and uh, you know the thing and it was a bit you know when watching in sometimes it's a bit a little bit you know wishing it was been part of it because I wish we would have done it I think we I think we could have especially like I say when Wince and Pete was there and Wardy and Flatch we should have done it really but I mean, the majority of the all around experience was brilliant yeah it was good. <laughs>